हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे गोविंद झाय झाय गोपाल झाय झाय गोविंद झाय झाय गोपाल झाय झाय श्री से राधा रमन हरि गोविंद झाय झाय श्री से राधा रमन हरि गोविंद जय हर कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हे घोरांगा हे घोर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हम कृष्णा कृष्ण घोर हे राम राम संधे थाय घोर हरे भो हरे भो हरे भो घर हरि भो गौर हरि गौर हरे झाय झाय प्रभु फा प्रभु फाल हे प्रभु फाय प्रभु प्रभु फोर पेमंदे हरि हरि गो शिव प्रभु पान की जाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर थ्री प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस टेक्स्ट नंबर सेवेंटीन And this verse is one of the principal verses in this series of verses here. Ayur hayanti vai pum sahum, udya astam chayanna so, tasyat tasyarte yachano nita, utama sloga varta ya. Ayur haranti vai pum sam, yudyan astam chayan aso, tasyate yajano nita, utama sloka vartaya. Ayur haranti vai pum sam, yudyan astam chayan aso. Tasyate yat shano nita, uttama sloka vartaya. Yatta 
Ayu, duration of life, harati, decreases, vai, certainly, pumsam, of the people, yudyan, rising, hastam, setting, cha, also, yan, moving, aso, the sun, tasya, of one who glorifies the Lord. Rite, accept. Yat, by whom? Shana, time. Nitta, utilize. Uttama Sloka, the all good personality of Godhead. Vartaya, in the topics of. So, both by rising in the setting. The sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the all-good personality of Godhead. Please repeat. Both by rising and the setting, the sun decreases the duration of life of everyone, except one who utilizes the time by discussing the topics of the all good personality of Godhead. Purport. This verse indirectly confirms the great greater importance of utilizing the human form of life to realize our lost relationship with the Supreme Lord by acceleration of devotional service. Time and tide wait for no man. So the time indicated by the sunrise and the sunset will be usefully wasted if such time is not properly utilized for really realizing identification of spiritual values. Even a fraction of the duration of life wasted cannot be compensated by any amount of gold. Human life is simply awarded to the living entity, Jiva, so that he can realize his spiritual identity and his permanent source of happiness. A living being, especially the human being, is seeking happiness because happiness is the natural situation of the living entity. But he is vainly seeking happiness in the material atmosphere. The living being is constitutionally a spiritual spark of the complete whole. And his happiness can be perfectly perceived in spiritual activities. The Lord is the complete spirit whole, and his name, form, qualities, pastimes, entourage, and personality are all identical with him. Once a person comes in contact with any one of the above-mentioned energies of the Lord through the proper channel of devotional service, the door to perfection is immediately opened. In the Bhagavad Gita 2.40, the Lord has explained such contact in the following words. Endeavors in devotional service are never baffled, nor is there failure. A slight beginning of such activities is is sufficient even to deliver a person from the great ocean of material fears, fears. As a highly potent drug inter injected intravenously acts at once on the whole body, the transcendental topics of the Lord injected through the ear of a pure devotee of the Lord can act very efficiently. Oral, reset, re oral realization of the transcendental message implies total realization. Just as fructification of one part of the tree implies fructification of all other parts. This realization for a moment in the association of pure devotees like Sukadeva Goswami prepares one com complete pre prepares one's complete life for eternity. And thus the sun fails to rob the pure devotee of his duration of life. Inasmuch as he constantly busy in the devotional service of the Lord, purifying his, his the existence. Death is a symptom of material infection of the eternal living being. 
Only due to material infection is the living entity subjected to the law of birth, death, old age, and disease. The materialist way of pious activities like charity is recommended in the Shmiti Shrasas as quoted by Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur. Money given in charity to a suitable person is guaranteed bank balance in the next life. Such charity is recommended to be given to a brahmana. If the money is given in charity to a non brahma without brahminical qualification, the money is returned in the next life in the same proportion. If it is given in charity to a half-educated brahmana, the, even then the mon money is returned double. If the money is given in charity to a learned and fully qualified brahmana, the money is returned a hundred and a thousand times. And if the money is given to a Veda Paraga, one who has factually realized the path of the Vedas, it is returned by unlimited multiplications. The ultimate end of Vedic knowledge is realization of the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedais Chesavar Aham Eva Vedya. There is guarantee of monies being returned if given in charity, regardless of the proportion. Similarly, a moment passed in the association of a pure devotee by hearing and chanting the transcendental message of the Lord is perfect guarantee for eternal life, for returning home back to Godhead. Madhama Gattav, I'm said, Madhama Gattva Purna Janma Navidyate. In other words, a devotee of the Lord is guaranteed eternal life. A devotee's old age or disease in the present life is but an impetus to such guaranteed eternal life. Om Agyan Timirandasya Ginajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Maha Sri Chaitanya Pranobhistam Yastapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaura Vani Pacharine Nirvashesha Shunyavari Paschat Yare Sitarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Oh. Mm -hmm. Devotional service. Mm. Prabhupada picks up on the point of using all of one's time in the best possible way. Using the analogy of that the more one gives to a qualified person, the more that's returned. So in other words, the more that one absorbs himself in devotional service, the more one actually gains the benefit of advancement in devotional service. Path back home, back to Godhead. Um, one of the little things that we used to always remember, we were taught this in the early days of Krishna consciousness, use every moment for Krishna. Never Just watch your mind and see where your mind is and then direct that mind into something spiritual at every moment. If you do these two things, you're always... You're always in the best position. Like sometimes you find yourself not doing something, you finish your service. Then what do you do? Immediately you think, what can I do now? Or immediately chant the holy name. In other words, don't allow the mind one second deviation to any other thought. Keep that mind focused directly in the activities of devotional service. And watch your mind and watch the activities and keep yourself engaged fully, because full engagement is always available, either through hearing, through chanting, through serving, through worshiping, like that. If you practice that, Maya can't touch you. She, she, she's far away, like that. Soon as you give a little gap to Maya, anytime we allow a little bit of Maya to come in, or we're not in Krishna, because Prabhupada would use the verse, I can't remember the verse, but he would always chant this night. Krishna's in front and Maya's everywhere else. You keep Krishna in front and Maya's not there. 
It's always looking directly. Kurmaya is up on the sides, she's on the back, she's underneath, she's everywhere. But Krishna's right there. So this is the tr this is a little bit of a understanding that if we keep Krishna always in everything we do, focused in our devotional service, that can be done in different ways. One of the things says, how can I serve Krishna right now? What is the best way? That is the general topic. How can I serve Krishna at this particular moment? Not later or what I did yesterday. What am I doing now to serve the Lord? And when you think like that constantly, then you start developing a pattern where you always stay in the, in the association of the spiritual energy. And then, as Prabhupada says, because you're keeping Krishna in front, either through service, through worship, through hearing or chanting, all the varieties that make up devotional service, you're, you're absorbed. Body, mind, and words. If your body and mind... If your body is engaged in devotional service, but your mind is thinking of sense gratification, then you're not fully engaged in devotional service. You're partially there, but at the same time, the mind is the main thing. So really, it's keeping the mind put in the right direction. Watch that mind like that. Because the mind can lead you to hell or the mind can lead you to heaven. The mind is like that, it says. We, we, we use that quote by Walt Whitman, which was posted on the back of the Bhagavad Gita, I think. The mind is a thing in itself, and it can cause a, it can create heaven out of hell and hell out of heaven. Two people can be in the same place, and that still one can be feeling happy, and the other one can be completely miserable because of the state of consciousness. It has nothing to do with the atmosphere. So much, the atmosphere can affect it. Prabhupada tells the story. Two men... They're on their way to the prostitute house. So they're walking along, and then they pass the Sankirtan party. And the devotees are chanting and dancing. So one devotee, one man stopped and said, Hey, oh, there's the devotees. I'm going to go to the Sankirtan party. The other person says, Nah, I'm not interested. I'm going to go to the prostitute. So when he goes to the Sankirtan party, the other guy goes to the prostitute's house. So the, while they're in their different elements, the man who went to the Sankirtan party is thinking, you know, my friend went to the prostitute house and he's probably having much more fun than I am. And the other person is thinking, boy, what a, what a degraded person I am. My friend was so intelligent. He went to the Sankirtan party and here I am in this place. Boy, I wish I would have went to the Sankirtan party. Prabhupada said, who's better off? <laughs> you are where your mind is. <laughs> so we can be in the temple, we can be in association with the devotees, we can be in, in the best atmosphere, but if our mind is tra traversing the, the universe to see where we can stop for some sense gratification, then that's where we are. <laughs> so keep that mind connected to the, the activities of devotional service. And one of the ways is to have a good schedule that we follow. And even if you don't have a, a tight schedule, you have a, a somewhat of a rough schedule, and then you know what you're going to do every time, and you keep your those activities focused. And then in between, you think of Krishna, you worship Krishna in your mind by chanting the holy names. In other words, don't allow that mind, even a iota, to jump into some other place because the mind likes to do that. In fact, you don't even know. All of a sudden, your mind is gone. You think, whoa, how did I get there? I'm chanting Japa. And now, here I am downtown Zagreb shopping. You know, <laughs> how did I get there? It's just that the mind will just sneak away, not even tell you, just, will just leave. And then all of a sudden, you're somewhere else. Or if you pick up on the association of something in the environment, and through that association you think of something related to that object that causes you to think about that object in a certain way, which causes you to connect that to something else. That happens in Japa. There we are, we're chanting Japa, we look around the room, we see, our, we see a friend of ours 
And then we start thinking about him, and then we think about what was it like being with him or something about him, and then we're remembering old times, and pretty soon you're on a whole different scenario. <laughs> it's the mind. So the whole thing is, as it says in the as it says, the mind is the best friend and the worst enemy. There's no friends and enemies outside of the mind. When Prahlad Maharaj was was criticized by his father, Rani Kashipu, when he was preaching Krishna consciousness to his father, Rani Kashipu became very angry and said, You're siding with my enemy. Vishnu, he's my enemy. And um, Prahlad Maharaj said, my dear father, the only enemy is your own mind. <laughs> Friends and enemies are made according to the mental concoctions that we, we derive through association with the material energy. So learn how to keep that mind focused on Krishna at every moment. And then even if you're not actively engaged in some practical service, you're Krishna conscious. That's the key. And so we were always taught in the early days of Krishna consciousness, watch your mind and see what it's doing now and bring it to Krishna in some way. And that way, that is Krishna consciousness. There's a powerful statement. It's so powerful, it scares most people. Even when I think about it, it's kind of like, but it's a statement from the Padma Purana. And it says, it poses the questions, what is the greatest mistake? What is the greatest anomaly? What is the greatest misfortune? So it says these three things. What is the greatest mistake, anomaly, and misfortune? And then it answers it, to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead for one moment. <laughs> That's the answer. That's from Padma Purana. So one moment means... It doesn't say the it doesn't say what is the mistake. It says the greatest mistake. So Krishna consciousness is like as Prabhupada said, it's like shaving with a razor. You have to be very attentive in the shaving. Otherwise, what happens? Little inattention. You start thinking about something else. You're not watching what you're doing and you're shaving. And then there's some blood. So in the same way. It's important to understand that this is this is how Krishna consciousness works. We're trying to connect to that spiritual energy, but we're surrounded by the material energy, and sometimes our own my, my our own thoughts bring us into that energy. So keep that mind connected to the spiritual energy by thinking about Krishna, by chanting Krishna's name, by thinking how to do service. Like one of the ways you can think oh, what service can I do now? Or what service that I haven't done that needs to be done? So we're always, if you always have that mind, then the mind will not take you to places you don't want to go or shouldn't be going to, like that. Or it just spaces out. Because the mind is really, really the number one, what we say, rascal. You, you want to be... You want to sometimes chant the holy names of the Lord and you're getting trying to connect that sound vibration so you can hear nicely. And the mind says, oh, man, I'm tired. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. I'll take rest for a little while. Right? The mind just put it, is always giving you other ideas or it's off on some other tangent like that. So that's why Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, never trust your mind. Always mistrust it. He says, your mind is a non-devotee. Haribo, did you know that? Mind is a non-devotee. We we're not supposed to associate with non-devotees, right? So there's a, there's a clue. Don't associate with that non-devotee. Give him your association, you, the soul. And that way bring that mind to a state of, what we say, purified consciousness or proper consciousness like that. Here the verse is interesting. Um, life is measured by the rising and the setting of the sun. How many days do I have? When everyone, anyone is born, 
your death is already there. In fact, you can even find out when you die, when you're born. Just like there are astrologers that can tell you, even if you go now, there are certain astrologers who will tell you the exact day you're going to die. Not only the day, they're going to tell you the exact time you're going to die too. They call Brigo astrologers. They're rare. They're in India. You can find them. They're still there. Uh, His Holiness uh, Indrajumna Maharaj went to see one Brigu astrology astrologer. He gave him a lot of information. Maharaj didn't reveal a lot of things he said. <laughs> so, uh, but they are the most bona fide astrologers if you can find them, because Brigu is the follower of astrology. But anyway. Everything is predestined. Your death is going to be there. But if you engage in devotional service, you change your destiny. As Prabhupada used to say, you're in kirtan. You clap your hands, your lines, just like someone can look at you, the lines in your hands, and they can see how long you're going to live and when you're going to die, just by looking at the lines in your hands. But Prabhupada said, if you clap your hands in kirtan, the lines change. <laughs> so here, this verse is very instructive for devotees especially, that duration of life is not measured simply by the rising and the setting of the sun. The duration of life is actually measured by the internal energy of the Supreme Lord for the devotee. And how does that work? Here, that one lives eternally, even in this body. We can live now eternally, it's right now, simply by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Because by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, we change our destiny. We're no longer under the influence of the material energy. We're influenced under the, what we say, daivi prakriti. There is, there is para prakriti, apara prakriti, which is daivi prakriti, the same thing. So prakriti means energy. And daivi means transcendental. So when you when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we are absorbing ourselves in the spiritual energy. And by that absorption, we actually free ourselves from the influence of time. Time has no effects upon the devotee. Because time is simply working to move the devotee closer to what we say eternal life. For the non-devotee, time is the most fearful thing. They're afraid, oh, I'm getting old, I'm going to die soon. So people don't like to think in terms of death anymore. You talk about death to a a non-devotee, and they'll, they want to immediately change the subject. Or sometimes they criticize you for being, what we say, negative. But we speak about death all the time because we know that we don't die, but we have to use whatever time we are in this body to become Krishna conscious. That's the concern of a devotee. The devotee is not afraid of death. Afraid of, the devotee is afraid of not wasting time. This is, this, is the, this is the thing. The devotee is afraid of wasting time. As Prabhupada says here, no amount of gold can bring it back one, even one second of one's life. There's that one class that Prabhupada gave, December... I think it was December 12th or 10th. I can't remember. It was in Mayapur, I think. In Mayapur, Prabhupada said, what is the time now? Prabhupada said, someone said, 7.25 a.m. And Prabhupada stopped his class and waited for one minute. And says, he said, now 7.26 a.m. So 7.25 a.m., December 10th, 1973 is no longer available. <laughs> you might have millions of rupees or whatever, or whatever currency you want. You can't buy that time back. So sometimes people think, well, the most precious thing is some kind of material wealth. But actually, it's time. Time is the most precious thing. That's why it says that a devotee who is really serious about Krishna consciousness, doesn't waste a moment. Real doesn't waste a moment of time. Always doing something related to devotional service. And uh, 
Bhakti Siddhanta and illustrates that. He says, Ta money, you can get it and you can lose it and you can get it again. But time goes in one direction like that. So time is time is not valuable, time is precious. That's very important. So here, the setting and the rising of the setting of sun is bringing us closer to the end of this body, but devotees are not worried about that. Because Prabhupada used the example of a, a, heat, a wheat husking machine. A machine that husks wheat. So he said, if you have it here in this world, it husks wheat. If you take it to the heavenly planets, what will it do? It will husk wheat. If you take it to the lower planets, what will it do? It will husk wheat. So wherever you take it, it does the same thing. So a devotee is like that. Wherever they are, they're serving the Lord. doesn't matter this place or that place or this place. Their service is what keeps them connected. And therefore, the atmosphere they're in has, doesn't have much effect upon them. It's their service that keeps them absorbed like that. So this is very instructive here. And what is the formula? It says that one who uses their time hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Satam prasangam mama virya sam bido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. This is the essence of Krishna consciousness. Everything has its essence. What is the essence of Krishna consciousness? To hear about Krishna and to chant the glories of the Lord. So we do that in Japa every day. We're hearing the sound vibration of the holy name. We're chanting the sound vibration. of We do that in Kirtan too. We come to classes. We hear the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So in the same way, and sometimes we even speak about Krishna directly. Unfortunately, we don't do that enough. Speak about Krishna's pastimes, Lord Chaitanya's activities, like that. This is this is really keeps the devotee on the transcendental platform, and by continuous absorption in these moods of hearing and chanting the Lord's pastimes, one develops a higher taste. One looks forward to that as much as possible. It's like. We all have the example. You read a good book, right? You're reading a good, really an interesting book. And you're thinking, boy, this is really enlivening. I'm enjoying everyone. I'm getting so much from this book. And then you're thinking, but I don't want to read too much at once because I might finish the book too fast. Right? Have you had that experience? You just think, well, let me, I'll just read a little bit each day. And therefore I get the nectar and that way I'll keep it going for a long time. So some, yeah, so even though we want to read more the same day, we understand I don't want to finish it. So, or maybe we finish it and we'll think I'll just read it again, you know. So yeah, so we get it. We get a taste for something. So that's Krishna's pastimes are like that. They, that they are transcendental. They're not part of this material world, and therefore, they are, are as good as Krishna. And what is Krishna? Krishna is Satchit Ananda Vigraha. So his pastimes are also such an ananda. They are also full of joy and they are eternally being related in some place throughout the universes. Okay, and that's the formula for eternal life. People, Prabhupada used to say all the time, we can give you immortality. This is the, this is the goal of our Krishna consciousness, to make you immortal. And people would criticize, well, you're also going to have to die. We're talking about realizing your own immortal nature. That's That was Prabhupada's point, that we are immortal. We just don't realize it. We don't die. Really? I don't die? Well, I thought I did. That's That's your body. That's not you. But as long as the body conception of life exists, then the fear of death also exists. The fear of death exists also. The one who's on the transcendental platform, as Prabhupada would tell that story, the benediction given by the uh, this one sadhu, he gave four benedictions to four different types of people. He told the uh, 
prince, the son of a king, he said, live forever. He told the, the brahmachari, die now. <laughs> he told the uh, sadhu, you can live or you can die. And he told the butcher, don't live, don't die. And then Prabhupada explained, the prince, he's engaged in so many sinful activities, he's enjoying royal sense gratification. So keep going, because if you die, you're going to go to hell. So live forever. He said, the brahmacharya, brahmacharya is struggling, has to do so many austerities. He's working hard. He's laying on the floor, eats kitchery. It's difficult. Better to die now and get the results of all your austerities and go back to the spiritual world. The sadhu, he's Krishna conscious now, so he can live. And if he dies, he'll go back to the spiritual world. So don't live, don't die. Doesn't matter. No. I mean, uh, you can either live or you can either die. That was the blessing. You can choose to either live or die. It's all the same. For the sad. And for the butcher, he's living in hell now, and when he dies, he's going to go to hell. So don't live, don't die. So for the devotee, we live in Krishna conscious, and then when we die, we again get the chance to go take another birth in a good family and finish up, or we go back home, back to Godhead. Prabhupada said, by by reaching almost pure consciousness in this life, you can associate with Krishna on another planet somewhere in the material universes and be part of his pastimes. Or if you make it actually to the spiritual world, then that ultimately is the perfect success. But this is Krishna consciousness. So the idea is to learn how to use time. It's an art. Don't sleep too much. If we eat too much, we'll sleep too much. Too much eating makes you sleep too much. Learn how to balance your eating in such a way that you sleep just what you need and not more. And that way you can use your time because Prabhupada, Prabhupada threw a real heavy thing at us in 1974. I remember that. I was in the New Vrindavan community at the time. And the community leader, Kirtananda Swami, had just come back from seeing Prabhupada. And he said, Prabhupada really shocked, shocked all of us. And the leaders were there. He said that of the four bodily activities, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, the worst is oversleeping out of the four. And then he went on to explain that Time is valuable. Therefore, by sleeping more than you need, you're wasting valuable time. And the other point was that by too much sleep, it increases the, the mind's desire for sense gratification. Like that. So Prabhupada used that to, to explain that out of the four activities, oversleeping is the worst. <laughs> But the material materialists, right? How many hours they sleep? Minimum eight hours, right? They say you have to sleep eight hours. That's one third of the day already destroyed. <laughs> when I joined Krishna consciousness in the old days, we were sleeping four, four and a half hours. That was the... I mean, and there were some devotees who were even sleeping less than that. Of course, that wasn't so healthy at the time. <laughs> but that's what we were so fired up that we had so much service to do. We didn't, we didn't stop, you know. We, and sometimes when you sit down in Bhagavatam class, everybody would fall asleep because they were so tired. <laughs> so we had to realize that it was just a little bit too much. <laughs> but devotees would get up 2, 2.30, 3 o'clock, if you got up any later than three, you were considered to be in Maya, and you were just about ready to leave. There was showing signs of, you know, falling from the from the standard. 
And if you were sleeping at 3.30, then the, the community leader would come and he had a cane in his hand. He would beat you, get up, get up. Because <laughs> in those days, we didn't, uh, we didn't have a japa period. There was no such thing as japa. Uh, Mangalarti was at 4.30, followed by Tulsi Puja, followed by Guru Puja, followed by class, followed by Prashadam, and then followed by out to work. So by 7, and 7, 7.30, everyone was out doing their services because we were on the farm, and farm life means early activity. So there was no japa period. So when did you chant? Before Mangalarti. <laughs> So devotees would get up at 2, by 2.30s they were in the temple room chanting their japa like that. I used to remember running outside during the Nishringa prayers to squeeze in around so I could come back in time for Tulsi Arti. Of course that wasn't the best. And then after some time we adopted the japa period. But that's what it was like in the old days. We had so much service and there wasn't any time for anything. And we were so busy. And when we would go to sleep at night, devotees would lay down before their head hit the pillar, they were out. <laughs> Finished. That's how that's how hard we were working. We really worked hard. And uh, but we did there was a little imbalance. There wasn't a lot of time for hearing and chanting outside of the the morning program, and that was it. The evening program also, too. So this was, uh, this was how much we used our time. But those days, although it was a little bit too much, it was a little bit of an imbalance, still we learned something. We learned that using every moment in the best possible way. Okay, so yes, any questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Shla Prabhupada came to U.S. that uh, it was predicted by one astrologer that he would uh, establish 108 temples. Mm -hmm. But then when Shla Prabhupada was coming, he had two heart attacks and then he said that at that point I was supposed to leave the body. Mm -hmm. So that Krishna kind of extended his life. And then also Maharaj, maybe how, how, how to understand this and then how Shla Prabhupada also had that choice, he said, uh, when he was in his final pastimes that, that he was that it was kind of depending on him that he can extend his staying or he mm -hmm. might leave. So in, in, in that sense, that, that influence of the time and Krishna's mercy and, and Shla Prabhupada's will. Mm, to, yeah. To... Well, in 1967, when Prabhupada had the third heart attack in America, he, 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 he describes, I prayed very strongly to Krishna. I haven't really established my mission. Please give me more time. So Krishna then he said, Krishna gave me 10 more years after that. So, but when then, when it was decided towards the end, when Prabhupada was deciding whether to leave or not to leave, the devotees were asking, well, what, what does Krishna want? And Prabhupada said, he's leaving it up to me to choose. <laughs> So Prabhupada had the, the, the will to stay or not to go. He wasn't under the influence of disease like a materialist. Although his body was breaking down, still, there's that one story where Prabhupada was so weak, he was just laying in bed in, in Vrindavan. And uh, he was fasting, he hadn't been eating for days. So it was actually Kirtananda Swami who came. And when he saw Prabhupada, he just fell at the feet of Prabhupada and started crying. Prabhupada, Prabhupada, don't leave us. Prabhupada, Prabhupada. And he was really emotional. And finally, Prabhupada said, all right, bring me a glass of grape juice. <laughs> he drank a glass of grape juice. <laughs> and Prabhupada was like, okay, is that right? And then, of course, after some time, it changed again, and Prabhupada went back to the other moods. Like that. So one of the reasons he was going through that, just to see 
who, how much the devotees really wanted him just to test their love. That's why Prabhupada, when he knew he was going to leave, he asked the whole society of every devotee in every temple, he said, have every devotee come and see me in, in uh, Vrindavan. So the leaders got the word, but they didn't put it out. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to see Prabhupada. I was still in Uvrindam. The leaders didn't say that because they were afraid that their projects would go down if they, everybody went to see Prabhupada. But Prabhupada wanted to impress upon each and devotee that last minute with their spiritual master so that that love would even become stronger and that would drive that devotee when Prabhupada left to become more and more you know, fixed in Krishna consciousness. But if you read the 13th chapter of the 10th canto, you'll get an indication of why Prabhupada left. <laughs> and that one is the uh, Brahma steals the cows and calves in uh, that pastime. That was Prabhupada's last purports for the Srimad Bhagavatam. 13th chapter of the 10th canto. And it was understood later on, it was talked about by senior, that Prabhupada was feeling such separation from Krishna that he couldn't bear that separation anymore. So based on that, Prabhupada uh, left. His love for Krishna had reached such a point that it was becoming so extremely painful and he could not stay in this world any longer. And then Krishna took him back. But Prabhupada also tells how Krishna sent him to this world to do this work, and he didn't want to go. He actually told Krishna, I don't want to come here. But Krishna encouraged him, no, you come. You write some books and I'll protect you. And then Prabhupada said, I came because Krishna sent me here. So, Prabhupada's an eternal associate. He's a Nitya Siddha. He came to do this work and then returned back to the spiritual world. But he always wanted to develop his, his uh, society in such a way that everything was established after he left. So, he, dis he, dis he established 50%. He established temples and deity worship. He established book distribution and Harinam. And he established the principles of uh, initiation. But one thing he didn't establish was Van Arshram. And that's the thing that he kept saying that we need to establish this Van Arshram, Daivi Van Arshram. And so when just before Prabhupada left, he said 50% of my mission is still incomplete. And Prabhupada, someone said, does that mean the Bhagavatam? Prabhupada said, no. It was actually the uh, Banashram. Of course, Prabhupada didn't finish the Bhagavatam either. He stopped at the 13th chapter of the 10th canto. The 11th, 12th, and the rest of the 10th canto was finished after he left. So, but devotees understood later on, and this was kind of revealed by senior devotees who were that Prabhupada really left because he was, his, his love for Krishna had reached such a point that he couldn't bear that separation anymore. And that's a certain level of bhakti when that's available in the process of advancement. And one gets on that level that death seems to be the only alternative. Let me go back to Krishna. I don't want to stay here anymore. But it has to be real. It can't be just because I don't like this place, let me get out of it. No, it's based on that intense desire to associate with the Supreme Lord in loving service. When you love someone and you're separated from someone, after some time when that intensification of that separation, the Vipralamba Bhav, can reach a certain stage. And we see, we read that about the gopi's relationship with Krishna, especially Srimati Radharani's relationship. And that actually, you know, there's nothing worse than that separation. Even death is more welcome than that separation. So this was really the internal reason why Prabhupada left. 
the, there's always internal reasons and external reasons. The external reasons was was too many neophyte devotees. <laughs> the Bhakti Siddhanta, he also said that. And then he Prabhupada said, My Guru Maharaj left because there were too many neophytes. That the spiritual masters there to raise people up, and then somehow or other they don't make enough advancement. So what's the use of staying? Better to leave. So that's the external reasons, but the internal reason was different. And the internal reasons are the real reasons. The externals can be can be adjusted. Does that help? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.